That is right, everyone. That is right, people. I am here. First of all, I want to say it will be, this will be a sit down video on me sat down because I've been trying to keep myself busy by, you know, walking to my dog for long walks. So my legs are fairly sore and fairly tired. I'm going to take the, the first minute or two of this uh, video to say a final apology and a very big I'm sorry to both Jessica and Bly. I hope we can start anew. I hope we can start afresh. Um, I've been a, I hold my hands up. I've been a total idiot. I've been really stupid. I have been a knob. And yes, I'm sorry. Um, I do these things without thinking. Do stupid things repeatedly. I'm not saying I'm doing anything like that again, but just saying. Um, <clears throat> the lot, I'm not going to be any excuses, nothing excuses me, but the lockdown doesn't help. It's in the same boat as other people, doesn't have much to do, so I've got lots of time to be thinking about things. Uh, something that <clears throat> someone gave me some advice because I do have anger problems, a short fuse, and I can just snap like that over nothing. Um, so someone gave me the advice of not. Take my anger, anger, anger out on here, just to kind of maybe step away from social media f for a day or two, or and talk to somebody about it. So I will be doing that. Just do want to make my video videos fun, cool, entertaining, and exciting. Um, so be, that's what my videos will be for are from now on. Um, once again, not excusing myself. But we all make mistakes. Some people make. You're bigger than mistakes than I have done. So there we go. So let's get on with this video. Because I am your, everybody's reigning, defending, undisputed, and only WWE 24 7 and hardcore champion. I am, of course, you know me already, but I am Triple Champ Rock. That name again, Triple Champ Rock. And this is the channel. They should be shouted from the news shops. The channel that leaves no doubt. The channel that should be awarded a slammy. And the channel that is in the, in the, is in the upper echelon. It is the People Wrestling Channel. I am your number one. Number one. Number one. Number one heel. And right now, it is time to tell all your friends. Spread the word. Get your voice heard and tell everyone you know. Check out that description. Check out every single one of my videos. Smash that bell right now to get every single one of my notifications on. I'm going to add me on Facebook, Ricky J. Pay. Follow me on Twitter, Rick the Rock 30. Well, if you would like WWA World Wrestling Alliance on Facebook, check my blog that you know you want to check out on Facebook and on Twitter. And not forgetting this, never forget it to get two, 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 yes, right, two shout outs. It is easy, it is simple, and we'll say it before, I'm gonna say it again. You like and subscribe, like and subscribe, like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Speaking of shout outs, I've got a few to do, so two shout outs for two people. So, first of all, wrestling mixtape, cool name, as I said in my last video. Uh, so go and check them, to other people go and check them out. I presume it's a guy. Um, next shout out. Stuart Beach, there's your second one, and a first shout out to Miss Crunchy. You'll get another shout out in another video, but you left a great comment, said you left a big uh, left a like for me, and you wanted more videos. So there you go. Um, first couple of things I want to say in this video are first of all the big show show. I recommend you all go and watch it. I've watched all eight episodes. Uh, really good, a lot better than I thought it was going to be. The big show is great in it. 
Mark Henry, Rikishi, and Mick Foley, Mick, uh, cameo in it. That that was funny. They're funny in it. Uh, yeah, definitely recommend you go and watch it. The main event that on now is on on Netflix. Great film for any any wrestling fan. Perfect film for any wrestling fan. Um, bit surprised it went straight to TV, but I, I get why Netflix play PWE quite a lot of money for it. But yeah, great film. Uh, the Miz is in it, but the Miz is amazing. Just playing, he plays it everything he does. Unfortunately, in my opinion, plays it being a wrestler, plays it being an actor. Um, then we've got Keith Lee in it. He's great in it. Co Coffee King, he's just Coffee King, Coffee in it. Uh, Otis, Otis is great in it. Mia Yim's in it. She's just a wrestler. Eric Bugen Hagen, he's all right in it. Babu Tunde's in it. Now he's not even on the main roster. He's not even on it, used on NXT, but he's in a movie. Okay. Um, Renee Young and um, Curry Graves are in it. <laughs> They're funny, really funny in it. Really, certainly Renee Young. Seamus is in it. He's great in it. And apparently on IMDb, that's where I kind of go and check what wrestlers are in movies or what people are in movies. It says that Beth Phoenix is in it and she's uncredited in it. I've looked, I can't see her in it. So maybe if you can spot her, then tell me. Uh, but yeah, great film. By the way, all of you, share, 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 and share. Every single one of you, comment below, comment below, comment below, comment below. Something else I want to talk about. The, the new game coming out in October, WWE 2K Battlegrounds. I believe this is replacing um, 2K21. So it won't be a 2K21. Whether the 2K series will continue, I don't know. Uh, but the trailer looked good. I'll be getting the game. I always do. Probably it's been going to be an okay game. It does look. If you, if you remember, like All Stars Two. So if you remember WWE All Stars, this looks like the second one. Um, so from the trailer, you had The Rock and John Cena in it, um, and then it, like they were fighting in a swamp, and The Rock threw John Cena into an alligator or a crocodile. If that's how you win, I think that's a nice touch. But then you had a Bicky Lynch and Charlotte in it, and they had like a big head, small body with powers, magic powers. So yeah, it does look good. I will certainly be getting it. Let me know if you guys will, or if it's your type of game, or if you prefer another 2K, 20, 21, or whatever. If you're disappointed, there won't be one of those. Um, I think, you know, people are complaining. Why not? They'll still, they'll still go out and buy it, and so will I. Do like and subscribe, like and subscribe, because this video, let's get right into it. Well, let's get into the main part. It's going to be about WWE tape for the rest of the year and no more live events. So we'll go do the tape bit first. This is huge, mega, unique and big, big news in the world of wrestling. So Raw, SmackDown, NXT, many men if they tape it, uh, the pay-per-views will continue to be taped. In the performance center in front of no live crowd and taped, not live. Um, this is good because wrestlers can now just do a few rolls, a few smackdowns, and have a few weeks off. So that's great for them, that's awesome for them. Um, but this is huge. Um, first of all, me, like everybody else, hopes that we get back to normal pretty soon. But I think that when we all get back to normal and suppose, in a way, pretend that this virus never happened. A lot of people have died, thousands, millions. Uh, and that's very, very tragic and very, very sad. But um, for us to get back to normal and life gets back to normal, I reckon a good couple of years... Who knows, it might be August, might be October, might be December, might be next year, but I think a good couple of years before we're all back to normal. Um, this is affecting everybody. So, this subject, I think, is you know, very wide open. I mean, lots of lots of opinions, lots of diverse opinions. Uh, but, so yeah, WWE taped for the rest of the year. This is massive. Um... First of all, bigger the loss, come, big, sorry, bigger the company, bigger the loss. Bigger you, the more they make, the more they lose. So surely WB can't be making much money from these. Maybe it's just in the contract, the contract they've signed with the USA or Fox that they have to do these shows. <coughs> um, I'm guessing they'll be making money from the adverts, from the commercials. That's how programs make money. 
Um, they've been making money off shop.com. I've seen a lot of people buying a lot more than they normally would, or people buying stuff that normally, so they're probably making money out of that. But um, that's really it, I think. So now, now how I would do it, and we'll get to that in a second. Now, unless Vince is really just a stubborn old man, a stubborn old bastard who won't take no for an answer, this is what I would do. So, for Money in the Bank, you've got Money in the Bank coming up. So you've got kind of six storylines heading into it. So you've got Braun versus Bray, Drew versus Rollins, the two Money in the Bank matches, Bailey versus Tamina, and most probably Street Profits versus Raiders. Um, then the match is going to get made. I don't know what the matches will be made, but there you go. Um... Now, how you know, no one's stupid. We all know what's going on in the world. We all know the situation. We all know what's happening. And then they even alluded to it on WWE TV. You know, like the social distancing thing. And even Vince himself said it would normally hold Triple H and etc. etc. So we all know what's going on. So for the time being, I would do no show, no, sorry, no match on the kickoff show. Still do a kickoff show. Still hype the pay per view, but just no match. Stick the match on the main card. Because <clears throat> matches are thrown together. Even for WrestleMania, two matches got thrown together. Liv Morgan versus Natalia. And another match with a small story Latin, <clears throat> Cesaro versus Drew Gulak. So, but, but very much thrown together. So, I also would just run with the six matches they've got. So, this is how I would do it. And that's what this is what I would do. For your small pay-per-views, six, maybe seven matches. For your bigger ones, ten at the most. Not... 12, 13, 14, 10. So for Raw, I would do, yes, a three-hour Raw, but but for the first two hours would be an Attitude Era Raw. Attitude Era being the best time ever, I think, in wrestling. It created so many stars, The Rock, Austin, Kane, Goldust, Kimmy Nash, Scott Hall, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, it built, you know, made The Undertaker who he is today. Etc. Etc. Edge, Christian, the Dudleys, the Hardys. I could go through them all. I'm not going to do, but there's a few, more than a few. Um, they could edit out the um, swearing. They could blur out the nudity, but still have an Attitude Era Raw. Uh, then you so the, so the two hours, your final hour. Try and have as less. Um, <coughs> commercials as possible. I don't know if the network would do that. For example, when you're watching Raw and it's 15 minutes to go and never commercial, it's like, oh, what? It's just so ridiculous. Um, so two hour, three hour Raw, um, an Attitude Era Raw, and then if you find out we're just covering current day storylines. So here's an example: you be covering or pushing, promoting, whatever. Drew versus. Rollins, uh, Street Profits versus Raiders, and the men and women in the on the side of Raw, put them in a match, have them pushed, have whatever. So SmackDown, you would do a two-hour SmackDown, but the first hour would be an Attitude Era SmackDown, second hour would be current day wrestling. So Tamina versus Bailey, Braun versus Bray, and the men and women on the SmackDown side of things. You could do that every week. But obviously, SmackDown was, to my knowledge, has always been two hours. So you split that two hour as to do a Raw, as a SmackDown, as to do a SmackDown, sorry, over two weeks and do that every single week. That's how I would do it. Um, that's just my thoughts, that's my ideas. But yeah, it's, it's, that is major, major news that they are going to be for the rest of the year. Before I get into the next bit, you all know where I am if you want to shot at me. You get training, you come and find me, and challenge me. <laughs> but you like and subscribe. Like and subscribe in the goddamn meantime. I am the man. I'm the number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Heel. And all of you know it. So next up is no more live events. I'm not sure, these are the rumours, but I think it seems to be true. Um, whether this will continue forever, I don't know. So let's get into this. So, I'm struggling to understand why Vince has done this. Obviously, Vince being a billionaire genius and wanting lots of, as much money as he can. So, 
I think the idea is because you know, over here, well, let me break it down. So over here, WWE will, will hire or book the Manchester Arena or the O2 in London. So I'm guessing that Vince doesn't, or elsewhere for house shows, live events. So I'm guessing Vince doesn't want to pay that out because he believes that he won't, he won't get that money back. But he will. I really think that once we're all back to normal, fans can go back to shows whenever that is, even if that's as early as August. But I don't think it will. So SummerSlam should be very interesting. Um, and very quickly, what they're doing the money back match is very, very unique. I think I'm loving that. I'm interested to see what they do with Extreme Rules. I think it's scrap Extreme Rules in Tile and Pay-Per-View. It's bland. Anyway, back to this. So, I think, you know, the Raws, the Smackdowns, the live shows, the house shows, whatever, will be and they'll be sold out more than they ever were. It'll sort of sell more much than they ever did, I think. Uh, but that's just me. I think us fans are starving to get back to shows. We really want to get back to shows. Um, so, yeah, no, no more live events. So, so see, what, what I would do is do a live event at the house, at the performance centre. So, just like a Raw, just like a Smackdown, except for it's not taped. And you can book some big names. You can have Jeff Hardy, The Undertaker, Edge, Orton, whoever, and just book it as a house show but it's there for the live crowd. And you can do that for a couple of months and see how that works and charge people and everything. Do it just like an NXT, but not taped. Um, that's how I would do it. Now, does that affect them coming over here? When they do a Raw and Smackdown over here, they do it a Raw and Smackdown. And this is really odd, I think. A Raw and Smackdown, for example, in the same venue, for, for example, in the O2 in London, and they don't really try and book any big names for it, for pulls pull people in. It's just a consistent storyline, and it's the same people. So, of course, people are going to go to Raw, even though I think SmackDown is a better brand nowadays. It seems to be a lot better. Both seem to be as good, but Raw, SmackDown is probably winning it for me. But WWE wants to believe, right, Raw is a flagship, flagship show in all of this, and Raw is the best show. So, fans, most fans believe that. Most fans are sheep, I suppose, and they'll go, what, WWE, and they'll go, and whatever. Um, some fans go to both. I've been to both, and that is really, really cool. But I just think they could do separate venues. Um, but would that affect them coming over here? Would do we continue to come over here just for twice a year? Would they go to go to other countries just for once a year? It's a better toll on the rest of the body, and they can spend more time at home because they can do. You know, they don't have to be on the road. So that's cool for them. That's awesome for them. But does that affect them coming over here? It also affects the WWE meet and greet I went to last year in November. Things like that. It came off the back of the Raw and SmackDown in Manchester. That won't be happening. Um, so I, it, it really is odd. I think, you know, like I said, I really think that the, the live events and house shows are going to be more popular than ever once we get back to normal. Um, so it's it, very strange, very odd. In my opinion, very stupid. A crazy idea. I've been mean, Vince is a crazy old man. Um, so yeah, that's what I would do, like a live event at the performance centre. Um, so just think that you've got to give, you know, give more, you know, go to more towns, go to more cities for for. For fans, why not? That's what pay your bills. That's what pays WWE. So that's my thoughts on it. I'd love to hear yours. Let me know. What do you think? Um, what's your view on it? Do you think it's a great idea that live events are gone? Do you think my idea is good? Because they have the performing centre. Could you see them coming back? I think they're going to come back in a year or two. For them to be gone forever. That's a lot of money for WWE to lose out on, I think. Then they're relying on Raw and SmackDown. But then Raw and SmackDown will be popular anyway, as well as the pay-per-views, once we get back to normal. Anyway, that's my thoughts. That's my view. Before I go, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Also, before I go, you, the holiday Christopher Mace. I'll be seeing you next Sunday. At Money in the Bank, the WWE 24-7 Hardcore and Predictions title on the line 
in a retirement match, also the first ever steel triple triple K match in WWE history. And I want you to look into my eyes. I'm gonna beat you. I'm gonna defeat you. I'm gonna make history just like I always do. I'm leaving WWE 24-7 Hardcore and Prediction Champion. I'm gonna retire from in ring action. I am going to bury you. I am going over. I'm going to pin you one, two, three in the middle of the ring. And you will hear this from the ring announcer. The man that just beat you. And your winner of the match. Triple Champ Rock. That's what you're going to hear. Just get ready for it. Triple Champ Rock. Salivate. Sal sal let that name resonate. Salivate sal the name. Hear it in your head. You're going to hear it over and over and over. Triple Champ Rock. Rock. Triple Champ Rock. The man that's going to beat you. The man that's going to end this rivalry. Take the thorn out of my side and throw it and cast it away. Triple Champ Rock. The man. The man. The man that's going to beat you. And finally rid of the darkness. That man is Triple Champ Rock. Once again, and listen clearly. Triple Champ Rock.